When a group of scientists conduct research on the world's biggest tree in the ancient redwood forest, what they find is unbelievable, and it leads to a huge discovery. The sound of drills echoed through the ancient redwood forest, breaking the tranquil silence that had reigned for millennia. The air was thick with the scent of pine and damp earth, a sensory reminder of the forest's age and majesty. Shafts of sunlight pierced through the dense canopy, creating a dappled pattern on the forest floor. The whirring of machinery stood in stark contrast to the natural symphony of bird calls and rustling leaves that usually filled this hallowed space. Then, a crack rang out, louder than any before. The drill had struck something unexpected. The team froze, their movement suspended in a moment of collective surprise and anticipation. Harper's heart pounded in her chest as she exchanged a glance with Dr. Green, her trusted colleague. The drill had struck something solid inside the tree's trunk. But how? Trees didn't have chambers or hollow spaces within them, at least not ones that could resist the force of their high-powered equipment. Shut it down! Harper barked and waved to the technician handling the equipment. Her voice carried an urgency that cut through the mechanical din. Harper stepped closer to the gash, now wider, and revealed something unexpected in the dim light filtering through the towering forest canopy. She leaned in, breath shallow, her senses on high alert. What lay inside the tree was not part of nature, at least not any nature she was familiar with. The gash revealed something pale, smooth, and distinctly different from the surrounding wood. Dr. Green, Harper said, voice trembling with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. There's something in there. She felt a chill run down her spine, a primal response to the unknown that lay before her. As she stared at the mysterious object, Harper's mind raced back to how this all began. How could a routine check have led to such an extraordinary discovery? The events of the past two months flashed through her mind, each step leading inexorably to this moment. It was as if fate had conspired to bring her here, to this tree, at this precise moment in time. Two months earlier, Harper Thorne had been tasked with leading an investigation into the world's largest sequoia, deep within California's ancient redwood forest. The government had hired her to check on the tree after a series of unusually violent storms ravaged the area, toppling several nearby trees and raising concerns about the stability of this natural monument. At first, it had seemed like a routine check, one she couldn't pass up. This was the biggest tree on earth after all, a living testament to the endurance of nature. Harper had always been fascinated by the ancient world's flora, and the redwood forests were the epitome of Earth's resilience. These trees had stood for thousands of years, their silent presence testifying to the passage of time in ways no human could ever comprehend. But what had brought her here today was far beyond her academic fascination. It was a convergence of scientific curiosity and personal history, a moment that would redefine her career and perhaps the course of human knowledge. The tree had appeared fine at first glance, its massive trunk reaching skyward with the same quiet strength it had displayed for millennia. Harper and her team were excited to collect samples to study this living legend up close. They had set up a temporary camp, complete with state-of-the-art equipment for on-site analysis. The clearing buzzed with activity as researchers unpacked gear and set up workstations, their excited chatter a counterpoint to the forest's serene atmosphere. Harper had spent the first few days coordinating with local authorities, ensuring their research would have minimal impact on the surrounding ecosystem. She was acutely aware of the delicate balance they were disturbing and was determined to tread lightly in this ancient sanctuary. Every piece of equipment, every research protocol was designed with conservation in mind. The discovery of the gash was strange enough, but what they found next would upend everything they thought they knew about this ancient forest and the history of the world itself. It was as if they had stumbled upon a door to the past, hidden in plain sight for thousands of years. Harper could now feel the weight of discovery pressing down on her. Inside the gash, something unusual gleamed. Carefully, they widened the opening in the tree, revealing more of the foreign object, and it quickly became clear they weren't dealing with a simple artifact. This was something far more significant, much more impossible. It's bones, Dr. Green whispered leaning closer to the object embedded deep within the sequoia's trunk. His voice was barely audible, as if speaking too loudly might shatter the moment. Harper's mind raced. Bones. Inside the world's largest tree, it defied all logic and known principles of biology and geology. Yet there they were, undeniable in their presence. But there they were. 
fossilized remains of something ancient, woven into the very heart of the tree as though the sequoia had grown around them. The bones were pale, almost white, standing out starkly against the rich, dark wood of the tree's interior. They seemed to curve and twist, following the tree's growth patterns in a bizarre symbiosis of organic and inorganic matter. Harper's hands shook as she directed her team to take photos, measurements, and samples. This was more than a storm-damaged tree. This was a discovery that could rewrite history. The enormity of what lay before them wasn't lost on anyone. They contacted experts from all over the country, archaeologists, paleontologists, and dendrochronologists, inviting them to join the investigation. Soon, a temporary research camp was set up near the base of the Sequoia, equipped with the latest technology. The once quiet clearing now buzzed with activity, a stark contrast to the surrounding forest's timeless tranquility. The team was determined to unravel the mystery hidden within the tree's ancient bark. They worked tirelessly, day and night, driven by a shared sense of purpose and the thrill of discovery. Each new finding brought more questions, more theories, and an ever-growing sense that they were on the brink of something truly monumental. Dr. Amelia Rodriguez, a renowned paleontologist who had flown in from New York, spent hours examining the fossils. Her expertise was crucial in understanding the nature of their discovery. These bones, she explained during one of their nightly briefings, her eyes alight with excitement, show signs of a species we've never encountered before. The bone structure suggests a mammal, but it is unlike any in our current fossil record. Radiocarbon dating revealed an astonishing timeline. These bones weren't from any known species. They predated even the earliest records of life on the continent by thousands of years. Theories swirled among the team members. Some suggested that the tree grew around the remains of an ancient prehistoric creature. Others suggested more fantastical explanations, time travel, alternate dimensions, even alien visitations. But how is that possible? Harper asked, voicing the question on everyone's mind. To grow around the bones, the tree had to be here before the sequoia. That's over 3,000 years ago. The implications were staggering, challenging everything they thought they knew about the timeline of life on Earth. Dr. Green, who had been studying the tree's growth patterns, offered a theory. It's possible that the bones were already fossilized when the tree began to grow. Perhaps they were part of a larger fossil deposit that was slowly exposed over time. As the tree grew, it incorporated the bones into its structure. The media caught wind of the rumors, and soon, the government got involved. Officials arrived at the site, demanding answers and inspecting the camp for any potential dangers. We're not ready to make any definitive statements, Dr. Rodriguez told a persistent reporter from National Geographic, her voice steady despite the chaos around her. What we've found is unprecedented, and we need time to properly analyze and understand it. She was acutely aware of the fine line she was walking, between satisfying public curiosity and protecting the integrity of their research. Word leaked out that the world's largest tree held a secret. Speculation spread like wildfire. Some claimed it was an ancient virus, others spoke of treasure, and a few went so far as to say the scientists had uncovered evidence of a lost civilization. Social media exploded with theories and doctored images, each more outlandish than the last. Harper's team worked tirelessly, carefully analyzing the bones while rumors spread beyond the forest. They knew they couldn't release their findings to the public. Not yet. We need to be absolutely certain before we say anything, Harper reminded her team during a tense meeting. The implications of this discovery are too big to rush. She looked around the room, meeting the eyes of each researcher. I know we're all excited, but we have to do this right. The world is watching, and we can't afford to make mistakes. As weeks turned into months, the team made significant progress in their analysis. The temporary camp had evolved into a small scientific village, with specialized equipment flown in from universities and research institutions around the world. The once quiet forest clearing now hummed with the sound of generators and the constant chatter of researchers. Dr. Amelia Rodriguez, who had become an integral part of the expedition, made a breakthrough in identifying the creature's skeletal structure. Her expertise in comparative anatomy proved invaluable as they pieced together their ancient discovery puzzle. These bones, she announced during a team meeting, her eyes gleaming with excitement, belong to a species we've never encountered before. It's a mammal, 
but unlike anything we've seen in the fossil record. She pulled up a series of 3D renderings on the main screen, highlighting key features of the skeleton. The creature, as they pieced it together, was massive, easily the size of a modern elephant, but with a body structure more akin to a predator. Its skull housed enormous eye sockets, suggesting it had excellent night vision, and its limb structure indicated it was capable of both quadrupedal and bipedal movement. The team marveled at the creature's unique adaptations, each feature hinting at a world far different from the one they knew. But how did it end up inside the tree? Harper asked, voicing the question on everyone's mind. The mystery of the creature's entombment was as fascinating as its biology. The team named the creature Sylvatiton Antiquus, meaning ancient forest giant. As they continued their work, they uncovered more fascinating details about Sylvatiton's life and environment. Each new discovery added another piece to the puzzle, painting a picture of a world long lost to time. Dr. Green's analysis of the tree rings surrounding the fossils provided valuable climate data. It seems that when Sylvatiton roamed these lands, the climate was significantly warmer and more humid, he reported, gesturing to a series of charts. This could explain how a creature of this size could thrive in what we now know as a temperate forest. The implications were staggering. Not only had they discovered a new species, but they were also uncovering evidence of dramatic climate change over millennia. The forest they stood in was a living record of Earth's history, preserving secrets that went far beyond the lifespan of any single organism. Meanwhile, Dr. Rodriguez and her team worked on creating a 3D model of Silva Titan based on the fossilized remains. As the model took shape, the creature's unique features became even more apparent. They used advanced imaging techniques and comparative analysis to fill in the gaps, bringing the ancient beast to life in the digital realm. The model revealed a creature unlike anything they had seen before. Sylvatitan stood on powerful hind legs, with smaller forelegs, that seemed adapted for grasping or climbing. Its head was large, with forward-facing eyes suggesting predatory behavior, but its teeth were more suited to an omnivorous diet. It was a chimera of familiar and alien features, a testament to the diversity of life that had once roamed the Earth. As the team prepared to publish their findings, the scientific community buzzed with anticipation. Leaked rumors had already sparked intense debate and speculation, but nothing could prepare the world for the full scope of the discovery. Harper and her colleagues spent long nights drafting and redrafting their paper, aware that every word would be scrutinized by their peers and the public alike. Harper's breath caught in her throat as she stared at the final revelation. The implications were too vast to comprehend. The world's largest tree had been guarding a secret for millennia, one that could forever change the course of human history. She felt the weight of responsibility pressing down on her shoulders, knowing that their findings would reshape entire fields of study. The announcement day arrived, and Harper found herself standing before a sea of cameras and microphones. The small clearing at the edge of the research site had been transformed into a makeshift press area, with journalists from around the world jostling for position. The air was thick with anticipation, and Harper could feel the world's eyes on her. With Dr. Green and Dr. Rodriguez by her side, she took a deep breath and began to speak. Her voice, amplified by the microphones, carried across the clearing and into the ancient forest beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have discovered in the heart of the world's largest sequoia is nothing short of extraordinary, Harper began, her voice steady despite her racing heart. We have uncovered the fossilized remains of a previously unknown species of mammal, which we have named Sylvatitan Antiquus. A hushed silence fell over the crowd as Harper continued, detailing their findings and the implications of their discovery. She explained how the creature had been preserved within the tree, and how its existence challenged current understandings of evolution and climate history. As she spoke, images of the fossils and 3D reconstructions were displayed on large screens behind her, bringing Sylvatidan to life for the assembled press. Questions flooded in from reporters and colleagues alike, each vying to be the first to uncover the next big revelation. How old were the remains exactly? What did this mean for our understanding of evolution? Could there be more creatures like Sylvatitan waiting to be discovered? Harper and her team answered as best they could, 
emphasizing that while they had made incredible strides, there was still much to learn. This discovery opens up a new chapter in paleontology, Dr. Rodriguez explained, her excitement palpable. We're rewriting the history books as we speak. The press conference stretched on for hours, with each new detail sparking fresh rounds of questions. Harper found herself explaining complex scientific concepts in layman's terms, bridging the gap between academic discovery and public understanding. It was exhausting, exhilarating work, and she knew it was only the beginning. In the days following the announcement, Harper's inbox was flooded with messages from researchers around the world, offering collaboration, congratulations, and countless questions. Universities clamored to be part of the ongoing research, while funding came from both public and private sources. The once quiet redwood forest had become the epicenter of a scientific revolution. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows through the towering trees, Harper took one last look at the sequoia before heading back down the trail. The discovery of Silva Titan had changed everything, but it had also reinforced a truth she had always known, that the natural world was full of wonders, and that there would always be new frontiers to explore, new mysteries to unravel. Have you ever made an unexpected discovery that changed your perspective on the world around you? What would you do if you were in Harper's position, uncovering a finding that could rewrite history? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And thank you for listening to this exciting tale of scientific discovery and ancient mysteries.